Today, I want to tell you a story about Final Fantasy XIV that you may or may not be familiar with. A story about righting wrongs, about a community united, and that sometimes it's a good idea to be careful what you wish for. What? The release of Heaven's Ward in June of 2015 was a completely different time compared to the FF14 of today. True. The MMO was still finding its feet off the back of a major relaunch, True. and it was clear that the developers were still in the process of developing a format and structure that proved successful in all aspects. A Realm Reborn had done great, and had pulled the title back from the jaws of permanent shutdown, but they weren't out True. of the woods yet. They needed a second hit to prove that there was staying power. Heaven's Ward was a gambit, a risky entry focusing on character-driven narrative, adding complexity to combat systems, and expanding the world. The writers weren't afraid to make bold moves either, such as killing off fan-favorite character Harshafon in- Okay, he wasn't a fan-favorite, let's be honest. He wasn't that fan-favorite yet. It is only after years after years that you start to realize that, man, we kind of miss him. Holy f they actually killed off someone. He wasn't like on the get-go fan favorite. No, nobody knew who this guy was when she took you in before you go heaven. So nobody knows. No, people just think, like, okay, cool, you know, a random NPC B, you know, give us a shelter, sure. He doesn't have any power. Come on, this guy has no power. This guy is not a scion. This guy is never gonna save the world. I mean, f this guy is blocking a piercing spear wrong. You don't block a pierce. You deflect it. That's how he died. He didn't even know his basic combat training. I wouldn't say on the get-go he was like a fan favorite. You know what I mean? In a brutal fashion, this See? death reverberated within FF14's community. And to this very day, people recall it as one of the most emotionally impactful moments. Because they don't kill characters. They don't kill a character like that. <laughs> this is the first time they brutally kill someone. What about Teslin? If you guys think that Hoshifon is a fan favorite, what about Teslin? I mean, granted, Teslin only got two levels of MSQ that she get featured in. Rather, Hoshifon got like nine. But what about Teslin? Does Teslin not deserve the same love as Hoshifon? I think Teslin deserves the same. That they've had in this decade-long game. Shirts were made, memorials were hosted, and great loss was felt. But what if you could change history? What if you could save him? Oh. Wait, this is a whole, this is a DSR video, right? The first ultimate encounter was implemented. An entirely new difficulty of content that stood head and shoulders above the rest. The unending coil of Bahamut you call and so the good. weapons refrain released in winter 2017. This one summer 20 this one is good proc. This one is not a fun ultimate. This is a good proc. This is the worst ultimate they ever made. But the easiest one. I think today you could become the easiest one because of the gear and balance. Who is only a proc ultimate. Who is not an ultimate ultimate. Yeah. Who is only a proc ultimate. You proc it, it's ultimate. You don't proc it, it's not ultimate. DSR TOP are ultimate ultimate. DSR TOP are the ultimate, you know? I think T is also pretty good. You could was a good first ultimate. I think Ooh is like the... If you don't proc it blind or you don't proc it on release, you you miss out so much for particularly this fight. And they covered both the main story... You don't know the struggles, the you know? story from A Realm Reborn. Yukob in particular shook the raiding community oh, to yeah. its very core. Because Oof. Yukob. I remember me and Muni had this conversation. Me, Muni, Eugene, Cool Girl, those people that were still young and like very involved in gaming in my community. I remember this day. Oh man, tomorrow UCOP is gonna come out. Oh, it's okay, man. man I want to play PUBG. You know, that time we are playing PUBG like 16 hours a day. Man, we want to play PUBG, man. Muni. Don't worry, others. UCOP will be done in two days and then we can play PUBG again. Haha, <laughs> true. It took me seven weeks. Because it was such a vast step up in difficulty from anything that had come before. During that time, Delta Escape took 16 hours, okay? So it was it is not a far stretch to think that UCOP will take two days. That players simply weren't prepared for. How could they be? An almost yeah. 20 minute long marathon yeah. requiring precise yeah, what, this execution, fight is insane. Memorization First time. complex multi-layered mechanics and excellent rotational gameplay and team play throughout. 
the true i like how he specifically mentioned the rotational gameplay because storm's blood right i think is the best personally i think heaven's word is the best because it was difficult difficult for me means fun but difficult generally is not always means fun for everybody fine right but for me i think heaven's word is the most fun but generically i think storm's blood is the most fun when doing rotation i think it's the most fun i think it's perfect you got your stances gauge management you got more buttons to press a lot of situational awareness rotation are different you know you still got your 60 90 180 right that is more variety i'm not saying that it's the best it's like a buffet right groups in the world would spend a week plus of full time gaming to practice solve and eventually clear a single one of these fights they were that hard and instead of being completely original encounters, they would instead be ballads sung of previously released fan favorite moments from the game's past. See, this is not just the one thing they need to do for Ultimate, where they remake, reorganize the fight into something different. I feel like rather than making new raids, like Alexander is done. Hey guys, since T is done, there's no reason to do another Alexander Ultimate. No, I think you can make the Epic of Alexander 2. The entire uh, Goddess Midas creator has so many more things that you can bring back and make another Ultimate. Two Cobb as well. Like even DSR, right? There's so many mechanics they can bring back, I feel. It doesn't need to be just like one and done, you know? Same for jobs. You don't need to create a new job. Just balance and actually make the jobs like unique and fun to play and maybe, you know, swap the role a little bit. Maybe you don't need to have physical range and magical range. Maybe just have pure DPS range and support DPS range. For example, right? You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is you don't need to create something new. Ultimate proven that already. But the community loved the challenge and they rose to it, eventually coming out the victors. Anticipation was high amongst players to see what the developers would do to pay homage to Heavensward, how its trials and tribulations would be covered in Ultimates. Then, Shadowbringers released in 2019 to massive critical acclaim. And just a handful of months later, accompanying its 5.1 patch came the epic of alexander mm. the ultimate raid theme this was good heaven's wards alexander raid series this was this was high massive success i think right the rise of interest in ultimate and also the rise in viewership in ultimate it's not because of DSR. It's not because of Shadowbringer. It's because of T. T is actually what makes people get excited for the next one. T is what makes people wonder what's the next one. Because T is so good, man. The mechanics is good. The phases are great. The choices of the bosses that they put in here is cool. It is not far stretch to think that Alex Tender is gonna combine. You know what I mean? I didn't expect Cruise Chaser to be the head. I didn't expect Brute Justice to be the arms and feet. You know what I mean? But it's a robot. You see how Brute Justice combined with Vortex Swindler Brown and blaster right when you do this ultimate it wouldn't be a far stretch to think that holy shit there might be a like a very weeby gatai going on you know the the, the 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 combine going on you know and they did and this card scene is the best one they ever made this card Despite scene is the best one they ever made controversies regarding the core hey, come on man you don't stop there what the f show the whole combine puzzle mechanic enigma codex and ended in the loss of the ability to place waymarks in combat thanks to a third party tool used by the world first group this Whoa, room. dear! Don't like that. Don't do. Don't say that to them, man. The world first group ain't the only one that use it, right? Don't throw them under the bus. Don't call them out like that. I don't think TPS was the only one that used Paisley Park. I'm pretty sure a lot of groups used it, right? <laughs> Set the bar even higher in terms of spectacle. And the man, this this mechanic is so well designed. It fits the team so well. The Alexander and his Enigma Codex, the the future boost. This, this mechanic is so creative, man. Simple mechanic, but the, the discovering this, man, was insane, I think. Okay, let me put it this way. If DSR was released during T and T is released during DSR, T would get exactly the same amount of viewership and same amount of interest and same amount of uh, people uh, interested uh, watching getting into Ultimate as DSR. I think T was that good. T was the first step where people love to watch Prox stream, you know? The creativity of the mechanics we could expect. All eyes looked to 5.3, where an ultimate was scheduled to release that was hyped unlike any other. Yeah, one was it's because of T, really. The main Heavensward story, the dr It was because of T. T was what made everybody wanted the, the fourth ultimate. So it was not because the time it was released, it was because ultimate has gotten better and better. It's like a, your local neighborhood just opened a strip club, and then the first two days, you see a couple of people go in, and then you're like, dude, our neighborhood don't need a strip club. And then uh, on the third day, your dad knock on your door, hey, your son, mommy and sister is not at home. You want to go out with, uh, you know, dad and son, 
bonding session and then you're like come on then i'm playing final fantasy 14 and then that is like i got something better than final fantasy 14 and then you are like okay dad sure and then your dad bring you to that strip club and then you're like holy sh dad let's do this again that's ultimate dragon song war in all its glory it was then the disaster struck the pandemic hit and understandably the development team struggled okay dad is a very good statement when Renon says then a disaster struck i was like oh is he gonna say the delay is the disaster because if he says that people is gonna be jump he's gonna get cancelled he's gonna get the joe cat treatment can you imagine if Renon says then a disaster struck ultimate was delayed his comment is gonna be like how dare you say that is a disaster did you think about the millions of people that died of covid you insensitive prick yoshi p did the right thing he didn't do anything wrong it was delayed because of the pandemic do you not have any empathy yeah reno would have been cancelled you know but the disaster was covid that is correct to effectively move game production from their office to a working from home environment quickly patch 5.3 was delayed for months due to this upheaval and the ultimate release was subsequently postponed until patch 5.5, which wouldn't come for the better part of a year. After a long way, biding their time, Raiders tuned into the live letter showcasing the features of patch 5.5, only to see this. Oh. The raid had been delayed again, this time until patch 6.1 of the next expansion, Endwalker. Were it to release on time, this would mean an almost three-year gap between the Epic of Alexander and this new Ultimate. What wow. the live letter did tease- Was it really that long? T to DSL was three years? This Ultimate would focus on the Dragon Song War in a what-if scenario. What could that mean? This was the first time an Ultimate release had deviated from the broad strokes of what had actually happened. Endwalker was the perfect storm. In the months leading up to the expansion launch, the game saw a massive influx of World of Warcraft players, tired of the current state of their game, following in the footsteps of massive content creators like Asmongold. Damn! The launch was insanely <laughs> successful. Yo, you know what? I think Renon has found what he needs to do. Stop making f***ing guys, especially for P12S. Hexagon suck. I think you found your calling. You should make more documentary like this. I think the production of this documentary so far has been amazing. F the guy five minutes in i'm already i really like this video already reaching never before seen player counts the story almost <laughs> universally adored and the implementation of brand new jobs such as reaper and sage had expanded the job portfolio to a whopping total of 19 and in the trailer for patch 6.1 finally it was time man Ooh. Let me tell you, this ultimate, months before this ultimate, you can tell everybody. I, and I'm not just talking about my static. You can tell the mood. From Uwu all the way until T, I've been raiding every day with my JB static. We just play, we just raid, we min max, we try to do better, we try to make <coughs> sales run uh, a smoother, better, faster, quicker, you know? So we are like playing the game a lot. We are playing the game a lot. All of us are like in the zone. We want to get in, get out, grab the bag, run. So then when we get to the point where, holy shit, ultimate is coming holy f ultimate is coming it's been three years you can tell the mood changes you can tell that in the discord people's mentality change people are starting to be like okay um we need to practice okay we need to find people okay we need to know who is who we need to interview the correct people we need to get the right people and then our offline team is like okay but we wanna this is also the first time my jp static wanted to race we are like okay but if you stream you're gonna lose if you stream you're gonna be at disadvantage so my, G my GP static split into two. Four of us went to do streaming, which is me, Kururu, Hotori, and uh, I forgot who. And then after that, we got the other four to five, which went to do offline. Takapasu, Ruka, Komazo, and stuff, right? So then they went to do their offline, you know? So it's like, there was a difference in mood. We were like, okay, we can help one another. Like, we have an internal competition. Let's just see whether who gets it first, you know what I mean? This is so highly anticipated. This is so highly anticipated. Within our static, we are like preparing for it. And then we will be like, yo, how's your recruitment going? How is your team doing? I think our team is doing okay you know like we were like you can tell the mood change and not just that you can tell everybody if you look at streams you can see everybody practicing you can read discord everybody was recruiting you can tell that after three years finally there is something that brings us all back together you know as a raider as raiders we didn't know the viewers would you know he was pretty good he was pretty good but we never expect dsr nobody expect dsr to just you know, we just want to do our thing. We just want to play our game. Finally, the time has come, you know? DSL felt like that. DSL felt like, uh, let's f***ing go again, you know? After 
at long last we shall be reunited, you know? Man, yes, I was really good. I gave in my all, man, in this ultimate. I never tried, I've never tried so hard in a video game before. DSR holds a very special place for me. The glory is mine! One of my students didn't come. The date is April 26th, 2022. Servers are coming up soon. Wow, that was only one year ago. Comes the release of Dragon Song's Reprise Ultimate. The first Endwalker Ultimate and what will undoubtedly be the most memorable fight Final Fantasy XIV has seen in I think so, I agree. Years. I agree. Hundreds of groups are hyped, connected to their statics Discord calls and ready to jump in the moment the servers go live. Before the That was an amazing day. Off, I want to quickly familiarize I think I think we should mark this day. This is one of the best day this game ever has. This is one for the history. This day is a historical day. I think Final Fantasy 14 yeah. has seen in over three years. Hundreds of groups are hyped, connected to their statics Discord calls, and ready to jump in the moment the servers go live. Before the action kicks off, I want to quickly familiarize you with a few of the major teams that you're going to see popping up more than once during this video. Kindred, a popular world racing team, safety helmet featuring everyone's favorite bald American Zeno. The Bald Samurai, okay. Hit Harder, featuring Style and Friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. That was the first time Zeno raid with the EU boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, even for Zeno, even for Zeno, DSR changed his life. DSR make him value this static so much. This is probably the best bunch of people Zeno is going to play. I, hopefully, I will talk to Kuru this coming FanFest. I will ask him about his plan. When I met the safety helmet uh, static members at EU FanFest, I told them, you know what? If my GP static don't raid, right? You guys think you have a spot? Maybe this will be the best time and the first time me and Zeno actually raid an ultimate. Dude, can you guys imagine? Eight years, ten years, me and Zeno have never proc an ultimate before. These motherfuckers have proven themselves, right? They are a good group, cohesive group during DSR. That cohesiveness brought over to TOP and they did it. This group actually did the two most hardest, miserable ultimate and they went through it. Now, did they clear faster than my JP group? No. Did they clear faster than a lot of groups? Yes. For me, it is more important that we get it done within the group rather than it doesn't work out, drag for three months, find a new group, find a replacement, clear in six months. I do not want to deal with that. Those are for hardcore players. People who are willing to be in the static for six months to clear an ultimate, that is for the hardcore players. I'm a f***ing casual. I just want to join a group. Two weeks, out. Go in, play two weeks, 16 hours a day, casually, get it job done, and I'm done. I don't want to spend three months, six months in this fight. You know what I mean? I'll talk to Kuru, see how it goes, and then, you know, ask Zeno how it goes. I would love to be part of them, you know, if, if, if there's a chance. Yeah. From the group that placed world second. Yeah, I'm a casual. Yeah, I, I, I get in and get out. Yeah. I'm a one night stand kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get it done in 16 hours a day, 10 days a week, done. Never do DSR again. Yeah. In the Epic of Alexander race in 2019. What the fuck? Neverland. A newly formed Wait, Star Static is called McDonald's? Oh, hit harder. Second in the Epic of Alexander race in 2019. What the fuck? Neverland, a newly formed non streaming group that looked like a real contender. Thoughts per second, the world first group from the Epic of Alexander. Kryl. Hey, that's us! Featuring Sasuke himself. <laughs> this pro is amazing, not just for doing the fight. Otter House. I stand by that. A lot of people think that DSR is only great because of the fight. It's not. The fight only constitutes 60% of how great this ultimate is, how great this content is, how great this day was, this period was. It is not about the fight. The fight is awesome, cool. Final Fantasy XIV can make good fights. Final Fantasy XIV developers is talented to make good fights. Ho, ho, ho. Who would have thought? Everybody does. Everybody knew. They are just being stuck. In this cocoon? Oh my god, stop making so much old content. Oh my god, just make sh content for us. We will sh suck your shit up. Just make us cut scene that we will cry. Yeah, right. These poor developers are being trapped. You know, that they cannot make good content. Ultimate is their release. Ultimate is what happens when you catch a beast. The developers, the talented developers are tigers and lions and dragons, man. They have been caged. All of them are sitting in the development room waiting for the day Yoshi P open the door and say, give them hell. ESR and POP is when Yoshi P green light them. 
make them suffer, make them cry, make them beg for mercy. The developers are talented, man. I think a lot of people don't understand. Ultimate is not about the fight. Ultimate is not about whether you can do it. Ultimate is not about whether you want to do it. Ultimate is showcasing that your favorite game developers, this game is in good hands. This game has got developers that can flip on the switch and do something like that if they want to. When the day comes, when the casual community dies and this game is only left with the hardcore players, this game will not die. You know why? Because I know these developers is gonna make content like this over and over and over and over and over for us. Let's just say one day Final Fantasy XIV dies. No more new players. People are not interested in this game anymore. Now obviously we don't expect content every three months anymore. We don't expect content every four months anymore. You know Yoshi P is like, okay guys, you guys are the only leftover, you know, you guys are the hardcore players. Obviously, we're going to make more content for you. And then all they do is just one ultimate a year. I'll take it. I'm okay with this. I will always come back and do ultimate. And then in between Savage and ultimate, I will just do something else. Because you know why? I know they have the people that can do it. If they stop doing ultimate, let me tell you, if they stop doing ultimate, I will look at it and say, what the f*** am I playing? I might as well play another game. Ultimate is the only reason why I still sub to this game. Just like you guys that say story is the only reason you, uh, uh, that you still play this game. You and me are not different. I am not an elitist prick and you are not a, 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 a casual toxic player. All of us want something in this game. You you guys are lucky. You guys got Ishigawa. You guys have got Koji doing the good job localizing, making the story translated in a fun way, consumable way, well translated content. You guys enjoy the story. Good for you. Luckily for us and gamer, we have developers that can still make ultimate content harder and harder and more and more challenging. You know, high five. Thank God, you know. No hit and Kiran is Tivoli, which is the group that I was healing for. In FF14, there are a lot of groups Wait, one that, is? Just Wait, that one? won't stream their progression, including a lot of very competitive top tier statics, and I won't be mentioning them too much here unless they're especially relevant to the race. With less than Ooh! an hour to go, the race to Well said, Renon. That right there, quote of the year. And I won't be mentioning them too much here unless they're especially relevant to the race. With less than an hour to go before quote the of race the year. World first was set to begin, a screenshot started circulating which put the entire community on edge. This is a picture Wait, what? which at the time was considered either leaked or doctored from the unreleased encounter. From a Wait, this screenshot was out before the patch? No, this is not data mine. One or two hours before server went up? No, this is not data mine. Data mine is not like that. This is not what data mine looks like. Data mine, you replace a model with another, you replace an animation with the other, and then you have a die you have a knowledge of a oh, so this one looks like a cliff. Oh, that one looks like a dynamo. That is data mine. This is not data mine. This is the actual fight. You got, you got, you got Astinian. You got the left and right eye at the com co uh, exactly same spot. You got the Aether meter. This is the exact actual gameplay. They never seen before phase. I, ha I have no idea about this. I did not know about this. There was no way this could have been spoofed in current Final Fantasy Yeah, before. exactly. And there was no explanation for how anyone had got hold of this screenshot. Okay, Data so nobody knew. Absolutely happens in FF14. Yeah, but not like this. Gets circulated fairly publicly, not like this. But it's usually limited to buff and debuff icons, text, and weird Fisher Price versions of the boss models. Yeah, exactly. Actual, it's not like that. Shot from what looked like live gameplay with enemy models and. If you tell me before this was released, I will say this is fake. But now, obviously, we went through the fight and you think back that this is already leaked. Before the fight, this is the actual fight. Some employee leader really played this and leaked the fight. Everything seemingly functioning? It has to be. Possible. Even if some group had somehow managed the impossible and got on a private server functioning on current patch with the new ultimate and it didn't implode, there's no way this could realistically be done. With that mystery floating around, the community had to collectively put it to the wayside because servers were going live and the race was beginning. Quest grab, ultimate unlock, party Ooh. up. I still remember, man, queuing in for this. I was shaking. I was like, oh, f***ing hell, man. This is what I live for. This is why I play this game. You finally can play football. You know what I mean? You are on, you're on the pitch now. You know, you go to training ground and you practice. This is match day. You enter the stadium. You line up. You sing the national anthem. This is it. This is the goal. The, you're, you're warming up. You are ready, you're ready for the whistle, you know? It, it felt like that, man. It felt exciting. Holy sh**. 
I was literally shaking the first 10 minutes. Like I said earlier, I use football as a relation because this is what, this is how I felt back then. You know, when you finally practice, it's fun, right? You, you, you practice with your friends, you laugh and giggle, you do dumb shit. You try to do overhead kick, you fell flat on the ground, your friend laugh at you, you get nutmeg and then you get angry, but then you push your friend, you know, like, no, this is match day. This is when you play against the others, this is where you're like, you are, oh my god, this is real. The first 10 minutes you play like, you know what I mean? Yeah, the first 10 minutes of this fight, I was fucking shaking. I was like, oh my god, three years, finally. T.O.P. didn't no, felt like that. T.O.P. we become experienced. Because from T to D.S.R. was three years. So it felt like you lost it and then you get back in, you know? And then from D.S.R. to T.O.P. is very natural. We already knew we've been here before. They cannot possibly throw anything harder than this. You know what I mean? We are seasoned veteran, you know? But this one, man, this one was... Bridge. You watched Harshafont die on all those years ago. <laughs> Two Knights of the Heavens Ward stand before you. Sir Adelphal and Sir Grino. You're going to have to take them both on at once. They start off with an onslaught of simple yet heavy hitting attacks. I love this phase one, right? This phase one is pretty big. I don't think people realize. This phase one has shown you that even dungeon bosses can be in ultimate. That is actually pretty f***ing pop. They actually throw you some random NPC B and C and they make an ultimate out of it. All these characters that was irrelevant, push over in the MSQ story or you just see them in cutscene, they are here. They actually make it happen. This is quite, I wouldn't say creative, but it's pretty exciting that they do that. You know what I mean? Because if this can happen, then let's just say hypothetically, Kafka and the Warring Trier wouldn't be impossible. Let's just say poor Anima, which is like a big deal in FF10, now resorted to being a stupid dungeon boss might be an ultimate boss. Just to name an example, Gambu, which is a dungeon boss. Suck my d You know, that earth guy in the fourth fin, and then uh, the water guy, uh, 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 cock my nuts. You know, that two bosses, right? Which is dungeon bosses, right? Can one day be an ultimate boss. You know what I mean? It's pretty big, you know? Like like seeing these two knights in phase one is, is pretty big, you know? Heavy hitting attacks, which groups had little trouble mitigating and burning one of their tanking vulnerabilities to pass. And shortly after this, Adelphal jumps away and becomes untargetable. And Grinot nice ramps up his attacks. Players will be targeted in sets of four with markers on their head and then shot with these big what the heavy hitting line AoEs that leave black. Okay, what the f is this video now? Been on. I literally just said that five minutes ago. Stick to documentary, man. We don't need you to make guys again, man. F the hexagon strat. It was a mistake. It was a one off. Take the L. Fuck it, man, don't make any- What? Are you, are you like, making a guide now? Black holes at the wall behind where they hit. These black holes cut down on your movement space for the next mechanic. Because if you get too close to them- I'm just f***ing around. To you ...and suck your life points no. right out of you. I'm just, Once I'm just joking. Once black holes have been placed, <laughs> Adelphal returns to the fight and darts around the arena. The party is knocked back and orbs begin to explode everywhere. Yo, Maybe this what deal, 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 deal. That and the black hole. Deal, this mechanic I see the first time I was like, what the f the first time I see this mechanic, I, I was like, well, here we go. You know, after I see this mechanic, you know, you know, just like when I told you guys the first 10 minutes I was jittering, after three years not doing an ultimate, finally get back in again. The moment I saw this ultimate, I felt like home. I'm like, yes, this is why we are here. Well, boys, we are in for a long ride. <laughs> this was the beginning. This actually brings me comfort. Yes, this is where I belong. To get trapped, to get stomped on, to suffer, to spend the next 16 hours, some stand days in fights that I might take a day to proc a face. Give it to me. Finally. The bosses also need to be regularly interrupted to prevent them from healing. Once you manage to pass through these mechanics, a set of markers that had never been seen before in FF14 would have Oh, shit. was it the first time? Is it? First time. The PlayStation markers. Players would get circle, triangle. Oh, was that the first time? Their heads, and they would be linked to the person with the same symbol as them. The pairs would be chained together. I still remember our study chat Maru san kake shikaku. Maru san kake shikaku. Maru san kake shikaku. Batsu is last. We don't we don't call Batsu. Maru 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 san kake shikaku. Circle triangle square. Circle triangle square. Circle triangle square. A knockback would occur, and then each player would explode with an AOE around them for heavy damage. 
If the burning chain wasn't broken by being far away from one another... Bro, look at that! Look at that! That is an ultimate! That chain breaks faster than the stupid Criterion! Can you believe it? The Criterion data has to be a bug. There's no way! You're both going to die. You can pretty clearly see what needed to happen here. Once you managed to reduce both Knight's HP to zero, and you needed to do this almost at the exact same time, because once one died, the other would immediately begin casting in rage. You'd be pulled into a smaller arena with a third cast a knight. Harshapant would run to your defense as a spear comes flying across the arena to your group, and he stops it in his tracks with his shield. Shockwaves pulse. You know, this was the moment, right? I was thinking you have to do this right. There has to be a time for you to come back to do this right. You know what I was thinking at the beginning? I thought, right? We continue progging, whatever. It's like, it's like, it's like, ooh, right? You didn't awaken it, f*** it. You pull, you keep pulling. You can still learn mechanics, right? I thought that let's just say once we get to a point that we got stuck, then maybe we need to reset the instance to do this phase correctly. So you can only do it right one time. And then after that, you need to reinstance. Only through saving him correctly, and then you go into the checkpoint, then the pull onwards is progressible. That's what I thought. I did not expect them to like loop it. I thought it's like we get to fit calibration A. We don't know what to do, right? Now we need to reset instance to find a way to go to just do phase one properly so that after that, when we save him, then we can proc. You know what I mean? That's what I thought. Yeah. And as you deal with the simple mechanics of baiting cleaves and dropping puddles whilst DPSing down the boss, you helplessly watch him struggle. Dead. <laughs> Ooh. What's going on? Oh no! What's you know what's coming here? Dude, let me tell you, man, I wished I am watching this. I wish I am like them, right? Casting it. I think this ultimate could actually be as big. Let's just say Neverland came out, TPS came out, Aether Team 3 came out. I'm telling you, this could be as big as WoW's uh, race. In terms of longevity, in terms of coverage, in terms of hype, excitement, this one, DSR, could actually be the one that put Final Fantasy XIV World Race on the map. Yeah. Oh, no. I wish, man. I wish I'm watching this rather than progging. This phase went by pretty quickly, because every mechanic was pretty easy in terms of execution. It was just fighting through the hurdle of initially solving what needed to be done, and how to figure out exact positioning and organization for the PlayStation markers that took a few pulls. After just over an hour since the servers came up, the first group were watching Harshapont 4 and pushing the caster knight to sub 30%, which was a requirement to beat his enrage. Otterhouse and Kryl both led the charge, seeing transition with enough players alive and watching the arena change to- Hey, he's blind! Hey, he's bling now! The star. It's bling now, my bagel! The two guys that is playing WoW right now! We did some keys the other day. Actually, uh, bling now has been playing since season one. Yeah, I, I didn't know that was him. Only now I knew this was bling now. So bling now was with bagel, bagel. Of phase two. <laughs> I didn't even know. Oh my god! That's one's uh. mercy concealed. Oh, oh, oh. For one side. That's a frontal. That's a frontal. I think oh. that's a frontal tank I gave him a damage down though. I think wait, that's yeah. what he oh, wait, what what? The, the first wall had been broken. This was shocking. There was a checkpoint in the encounter after you successfully checkpoint! landed your first attack. Who would have thought, right? So you who would have thought we would come back here? For the who would have who would have thought? Who would have thought this was not a first phase? Who would have thought this phase would come back, you know? This had never happened before in an ultimate encounter. Outcry erupted on message boards and in Twitch chats as the Reddit detectives gave The fight has a checkpoint. The game is ruined. My life ruined and the world is ruined. I cannot sleep at night now knowing the new ultimate is a checkpoint. Oh, I have worked to I cannot believe this. I'm un what? Wait, this is not real, right? This is a meme, right? Two cents on the topic. Claims that this ultimate would be the easiest ever and complaints <laughs> that the checkpoint would ruin Wait, I was progging, I didn't know. For the 10 days I'm locked in, I have no connection to the real life. People were upset when we got by a first phase of a 20 minute fight and they think that this fight is the easiest just because of that. It's like you got a pretty girl at the beginning of the movie. She was taking off her clothes and then suddenly cut. You go to McDonald's advertisement. Man, this movie sucks. I cannot believe I didn't see nipples. Holy sh I just spent 
12 dollars of this movie ticket and you left the theater no right you wait right she's gonna take off that bra again man and maybe this time you will see nipples you just leave where's the faith just one checkpoint and one face in people think that this is the old <laughs> Man, you motherfucking people on Twitter is fucking stupid, man. You guys are dumb. Ready, Twitter official forum. You guys are fucking, you guys are idiots. The encounter were abundant. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that these concerns amounted to absolutely nothing, because what was to come were some of the best and most exciting moments in the game's history. As the four running statics began pulling P2, the rest of the competitors quickly caught up. After a few simple mechanics, Thordon began casting Strength of the Ward his first major mechanic, and any raiding veteran immediately knew what they were witnessing the moment the boss became untargetable. Trios. So, ever since so the early, company, right? Trios were so early. Mechanics, which would throw intense combinations Very surprising. Standalone savage Trios started so early. Introduced. They'd be combined in new configurations to offer harder tests. Usually, there would be a few trios in quick succession, with damage phases on the boss breaking them up. This was very clearly going to be a trio-centric phase, where damage on the boss would come naturally as long as mechanics were passed with eight players alive. At the end of the cast of Strength of the Ward, three of the Heaven's Ward Knights will appear around the edge of the arena. Man, this fight is so good. Straight line, rendering most of the floor space a death zone. Like, 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 like don't get me wrong, guys. This is just a simple trio. This is just trio like any other. This is just yawn, yawn, another EX dungeon similarity, ward, warp, pool, trio and trio. You know what I mean? But the fact is, they use the knights, man. They use the knights so well, man. Like, you always ask, right? How are they gonna make the entire knights, like, get involved, right? Man, this trio just did it so well. So good. They need to spread within those two small safe spots because each is going to take a small AoE damage on themselves. Then, a third knight will slam down a pulsing... This earthquake is the hardest mechanic in DSR. Nobody can disagree with that. The earthquakes circular ballast that needs to be dodged in combination with setting up to avoid delayed line aoe's on each player from thordon then and yeah that's right that's only the first half of the mechanic three players will get blue markers on their head indicating their man and the music man them. oh my Two god will spawn in okay i want you guys to know right i never done i only done dsr three times i i, I have only done dsr three times one time on the clear second time on the second week of reclear and the third time with zeph for my NA character when we were preparing for Abyssos. That was the only three times I cleared uh, DSR. I refused to do DSR again. I did not clear DSR again. Number one, I don't give a shit about titles. I don't give a shit about the glamour. I only care about the proc experience. That is only three times. And, and because DSR holds so high value in... I would even say in my life. Like, not just Final Fantasy XIV, not just streaming, but even in my life. You know, I this is such a wonderful experience i kind of don't want to paint it that's why i never go back in this is the most wonderful memory for me that's why this is the ultimate i do the least even top i did a lot but this one i did four times and i never want to do it like i, I wouldn't say i don't want to do it again but it's not the same that proc is just <sighs> now watching this i guess this is a documentary now watching this documentary oh brings back brings back so much man brings back br brings back so much in the arena with tethers that tanks need to grab because they're both tank busters six towers will spawn and growing red aoe's appear all over the floor this was a mess what? if a tower was missed it was a wipe if a blue aoe was too close to the group it was a wipe if a tank misplaced their tether it was probably a wipe this mechanic was intensely punishing but groups pushed through after this, they got a brief respite, aside from the tank who just got hit in the face a few more times, followed by the cast of a mechanic that will definitely be memorable for This is one of the hardest mechanics. Sanctity of the Ward. This is one this of the hardest essentially... mechanics. This is one of the hardest mechanic they ever done. Can you imagine this mechanic in the last phase? Groups is gonna take another one week to clear. I don't think you just understand. It's not hard. I opened up a red guy, I read it two times and I got it. I don't know what the f you mean. There's only two patterns, bro. Come on. Yeah, you, 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 you shut the f up. You clean ultimate, right? That doesn't mean you're good. You and me are different. You and us are different. Just because you work at McDonald's, I also work at McDonald's. I pack my burger way better than you. You are just a dishwasher, okay? Don't put me and you in the same league. It's not the same, okay? A giant red eye would appear on the edge of the room as... Figuring out this mechanic is one of the hardest sh every one of us ever done in prop, okay? Don't look at them. Knights would spawn in the room 
and two random players would get a one or two sword on their heads. The players would be left this on the is so the dark night twice. The, 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 this face requires, if not the most pixel per. Okay, let me put it this way. This is a mechanic my wife would never be able to do. I'm sorry, I'm not saying that you're bad. This is mechanics that some of you can never solve. This is not for everyone. I'm not highballing. Based on proximity, so the one group would need to be away from the knight, with the two group being behind his initial spot. This seems super doable until you factor in the fact that the arena at the time looked like this. You know, winnable. You you know this fight also for the first time, right? You know how when we do ultimate, our mechanic slash safe spot is always cardinal or inter cardinal or between cardinal and inter cardinal. You got 16 direction that you know you find safe spot, right? This is the first time they actually do mechanic where holy f Jesus Christ, man. Your only safe spot is one random out of nowhere. A, a very unnatural, you don't even know how to call it. You know what I mean? Like in U, you can still say four runes. You know, four runes. Like even U, you got something like that, right? This one, no. This one is like, what the f <laughs> Or you could just do this. I know which one this is. I remember this clip. I think it was Vela. Vela got fear and he never got hit by a single mechanic. <laughs> Holy shit, Valor. That was <laughs> I remember this clip. This clip was freaking amazing. Focus, focus, focus. Once you make it through this mechanic, <laughs> at the time with a lot of clenching involved while the sequence was still- Ew, this mechanic is- This mechanic- This mechanic is very overwhelming. Now that you solve it, it makes sense. This mechanic at the beginning was very overwhelming. What the f- do we, I mean, do we even get here? You need eight people here. Do we even get here clean? It's a really a challenge. And then after that, I have to like, got this figured out. I think that took us half a day, I think. This could be one of the mechanic out of all the ultimates that I think we spend the most time figuring out, for sure, 100%. Blind, right? Random configurations of towers spawn. Some inside near yeah, the so door, random, some yeah. Two players are Super marked, random. Shortly, players will need to split themselves off into pairs to cancel out fire and ice AoEs that will target themselves. Then... I also cannot believe for the first time, they make you have to use uh, arm slang. I cannot believe arm slang is an actual mechanic. Rather than a convenience, arm slang is a requirement actually to do this mechanic, which is which is quite shocking. And you, you know what guys, you know what this means, right? This means, right, raw action will never be taken away. Because of this fight, they can never take away arm slang and shortcut. It's like LB, they can never take away LB because of Wu and now uh, T.O.P, you know? Players need to grab those towers and the two marks. I was really, I was game. really hoping, right, by today, right? You know how, like, the community is so f***ing bored that they come up with stuff like 8 tank ultimate, 0 healer ultimate, you know, people are so f***ing bored, right? I really thought that somebody would come up with a strat for this that do not require arms length. I still refuse to believe until today, right, that they actually make a mechanic where arm slang is a requirement. LB, I can understand. You know, you do the fight, the mechanic, uh, they give you enough LB and then you press the button, you know, for law purpose, for glamorous purpose. Sure, right? I can understand that. But like an arm slang, an ability, a raw ability, it's actually a requirement for mechanic. Even today, I don't believe it. I really thought that people will find a way to do this mechanic without arm slang by now, but I guess not. So arm slang is never going to go away, you know? Roughly opposite one another on the outside of the arena and then run a half circle around baiting the meteors that will drop on top of them one by one. A second set of eight towers spawn, this time not random, all on the edge, a knockback happens. Bruh, that tight pattern, man. I mean, we, we managed to find a way to go by the tight pattern, obviously. Like, we don't always put it north and south, right? We don't always start at north and south. We don't always be like, oh, if it's a shit pattern, we choose this and this, and then you tell the guy, famous last word, do your best. <laughs> when you get the shit better do your best that is the only words of encouragement you can give now i'm gonna assume that today that is an add-on for this again like i say i don't know i i have not i only done this fight four times i'm gonna assume by now that is an add-on for shitty pattern i don't know players need to i mean oh macro oh oh yeah i saw gorillion use the macro holy gorillion one shot it yeah, yeah yeah i don't know how that macro works but gorillion was using a macro yeah he knows when to stop he knows when to go he knows when to stop he knows when to go, yeah. In theory, this mechanic sounds like a lot of very simple things on top of each other, and it is. The issue is that there is so much randomization that a number of rules needed to be made to deal with every- Hey, it's me! Let me put my camera somewhere else. Yo, it's me, dude! I made it, mom! 
randomization that a number of rules needed to be made to deal with every single permutation. There was a chance to need to swap meteor positions, to have this was the day Sasuke W was born. This was a historical moment. Sasuke W only appeared first time playing ninja since 5.0. One week before DSR, first time playing ninja. The name Sasuke W only was created three days before Raid. I was using my character. I didn't glamour it. I did not Fantasia it. Three days before Ultimate, I surprised the world with this name. It was a meme. It was a joke. But now he's a legend. Player swap spots. There were so many variables that solving this consistently. This is. This has to be the best name I ever come up with. Yeah. Wasn't going to be a simple task. Groups spent hours here bashing their heads against this one. This mechanic is hard. Their strategies and develop a workaround. <laughs> You know, just casually eating a peanut, it's fine, right? I mean, just stand still and resolve mechanics. There were alternative solutions too. Holy shit, Lord. Wait, what happened? What the f is that thing in the middle? <laughs> Wait, what the f is this? Oh! Holy sh! He did not get server take. You see? In World of Warcraft, right? We have got people that is able to push 26. We got 27, 28 keys. We got people like Echo and Liquid that is able to down mythic bosses before nerf. The exceptional players. The players who can do insane things that any other self proclaimed hardcore raiders can never do. These are things that you know is better than you. These are the small little things that you witness one in one year, one in one month, one in one raid here, one in one expansion. These are the moment you know these people are way better than you. These people have that one extra gaming sense that some of you will never have. Some of you will never even consider doing this. Some of you cannot even do a fight without add-on. Some of you cannot even do a fight without guide, for example. These are things. This is what separates uh, the best players and a normal raider. You know what I mean? See, a lot of people would have been like, that is just lucky. Three out of ten times only it will work. Hey, but did you try? Did you try to keep the run alive? It's still a life pool. He tried. He f***ed up. He tried. You know what? He did it. You know what? Probably best pool of the night. Yo, that was Shit, insane. Whoa, that is crazy. Whoa, yeah, that is insane. The ninja way, you love to hear it. Gordon and his knights would rally together and cast ultimate end, causing massive group damage. If he survived, he'd be so taken aback that he'd start panicking. And if he made it through to this point relatively cleanly, a kill was absolutely in sight. And so, one by one, the kills came in. Groups were still pretty close to one another at this stage. And in the later stages of day one, Gordon met his end. Time for phase three.